I did my eyebrows the other day and I quite literally feel like they look like cousins rather than sisters. But it's fine, because at least they're related. Hello. Lately, the human species has been getting on my everlasting nerve and I just can't. Like, I quite literally feel as if we are the cockroaches of the earth. We are annoying. And I am here to just unleash my rage on the internet. I can't go through this. That little drink, tell me what you think in my glass. Mm, I can smell the hint of a summer day. And the beach in Aspen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Men. Men, 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 men have a way of just getting getting on my nerves. And I'm not talking about like all men. There's just a certain type of man that just makes me want to light the world on fire. And it's a type of guy that's just like super creepy, oversteps their boundaries, and it's just so annoyingly disturbing. Like for me, I'm talking about the men that are super creepy and just like not really aware of how threatening they could be to like <laughs> other species. Like one day I was walking to a family friend's pool, right? So I'm, you know, looking all cute in my Beyonce Beychella boots shorts and my tank top and it was hot and I was walking to my family friend's pool up rolls up this white Toyota there's a man inside the car with gloves on gloves on and I looked at the car it wasn't a lift it wasn't an uber so I'm like sir <laughs> what in a true crime podcast is going on here so he like rolls up beside me and he calls out for me and he's like hey what's your name and I was like my name Jennifer can I help you? And he was like, oh, I just think you're like beautiful, you know, like trying to like talk to me and stuff like that. And I'm just like, sir, you are sitting in your car with gloves on. And this is how every Lifetime horror movie starts. And I am not here for it. PDA. Why is it do I have to see you and your significant other sucking each other's faces off? Hmm? Like I don't, I don't need, I don't need to see it. I've always been this way. I just hate when people show affection in that sense, like making out for the world to see, kissing each other, groping each other. Like there are people in public do that in your own time. Like I don't mind hand holding, you know, a kiss on the cheek, you know, a kiss on the lips, a quick, you know, a little, you know, a little, you know, like I think it's cute, but like a full on like tongue swap, spit swap, like ugh. Stop asking women when we are having babies. It makes me not want to have kids that much longer. Like, it just makes me like, why do you expect me to have children? Like, I want kids. Like, I want babies. Just like thinking about like my little nuggets and like running around. Like, ugh, they're gonna be so cute. We're gonna be like best friends, but like they're gonna know I'm their mom. And they're gonna be like really great people. And we're just gonna sit around and roast their dad. And we're just gonna have a great time. But like, don't ask me when I'm having these babies. Like, are you gonna be supplying them with financial needs? Like, a girl who's trying to travel the world and get drunk on a beach in Europe. Making memes the internet slash a personality. No, I know that we are in the internet age. Okay, of course you're gonna pick up some stuff like from the internet and it's gonna be like cool, trendy, but I hate, a mi no me gusta. I don't like when like influencers or people just make like, I don't know how to explain it. Like when people are saying purr every five seconds, like that is not in your vocabulary. Stop it, it's not you, it's not your personality and it just doesn't roll off the tongue. I don't know how to explain it, but I just hate when people make internet lingo internet things a personality trait of theirs when it doesn't come naturally and it's like so forced but i hate when people are just like oh this is the new thing and they make it like a part of their personality just to be relatable that's the thing i think they do it i think when people do it and it's not natural just to be relatable that really irks my nerves because it's just cringy you know it's just like <laughs> chuggy as the kids say being dirty and thinking it's relatable. I don't know, maybe this is an unpopular opinion, but I don't feel like farting, burping, sneezing, and or like eating really gross. Like I don't think that's relatable. I don't think it's cute for me. It makes me feel uncomfortable. Like I just, I've always been this way. I don't think it's cute. I don't think it's relatable. Like when I see like other people do it and they're just like, <laughs> trying to be quirky, cute, and relatable. I'm like, no, that's not relatable. That's just nasty. For example, like when celebrities were just like, oh, I haven't showered in 10 days during the pandemic. I'm like, that's not relatable. 
That's nasty. I know damn well you got 10 bathrooms with two shower heads and you're not even using the one. Like, that's that's tragic. Sitting all up in that muskiness for 10 days and you got like, you live in a mansion. Toxic positivity. If I see one more person repost the success of Jeff Bezos talking about if he can do it, you can do it too. You just gotta try. I just hate when people make people who are like billionaires, trillionaires, who are going to the moon, like that standard, and they're just like, you better get out of bed every morning, even if you don't feel like it. Just go, go, go. You know, don't let your your demons, your depression, your anxiety, those are just excuses. Like, according to the chemicals that are imbalanced in my brain, it's not an excuse, man. It is science. A lot of these, like, videos and posts and people who are just like I I I had to do all these things when I was younger and just to get to where I'm at now and it's like they never talk about their privileges that allow them to get to their moment of success make it make sense am I making sense I don't even know but this wine mm-hmm Oh my God, going to the gym to be healthy and fit, but like not really working on here, you know? I love working out. I feel like it helps my mental health, but I feel like when I started going to therapy and I started eating healthier and I started really focusing on negative habits and trying to rewire my brain and change my perspective and things of that nature, that's when my mental health journey really started. I, it really, it really pains my heart when I see people in the gym and they're just like just did cardio and three reps of Bulgarian squats or whatever they have the nicest body the fit like a fit body and it's like yeah you look great but like what about in here like are you really doing the work instead of you know like doing the work are you doing the work like your brain is a muscle maybe you should work that out okay and then focus on those squats Make your brain as juicy as you want to make your butt. Ghosting your friend and saying that their low maintenance relationship sends me off the deep end. I fully understand that we all have our lives. We all have things that we're doing. We all have things that we're going through. I am very guilty of just ghosting people. However, I'm not gonna sit here and say like, oh, like a, it's a low maintenance relationship and I really love that when we reconnect, we find our way back to each other. No. Now, in my adult age at almost 30, she's 27, um, but she looks like she's 17, so stop it. Ghosting your friends is, I feel like disrespectful and it's not a low maintenance relationship. I feel like if you're going through a hard time, send a quick text. I don't know, friendship is a two way street. If this was a significant other, y'all be communicating left and right. Y'all be hanging on these toxic relationships left and right and they are not low maintenance at all. But you can't even text a friend back after a couple of days, after a couple of weeks. Like, come on now. Like, we gotta do better. We got, we have, as a people, we have to do better. My lips are chapped. <sighs> my last, my last, my last point in this rant. Wow, literally a couple slips into this rosé and I am not okay, okay? Why am I having this much fun talking about my feelings? Vampire fucking diaries. I literally, I finished the last, <sighs> let me get myself together. I haven't watched Vampire Diaries in years. I used to watch I think in like high school and it's been a long time since I watched the series But for some reason I decided to start it a couple weeks ago. First of all, Team Damon All the way. I feel like Damon was a lot more selfless than Stefan and you cannot tell me that he was not You cannot you cannot tell me that he was not like he gave up all his good for his brother after his brother turned him into a fucking vampire Después the hermano de él turned him into a vampire. Can we talk about how annoying Elena is? Anno just the whining and the crying and the... Damon, Stefan, no, not for me, just... Just can't. Giving very main character syndrome without the main character qualities. Like, girl, baby girl, sit down. Catherine was very interesting. She was giving very spice. She was giving very flavor. She was giving substance. She got on my nerves. But like she had a really sad story. And the fact that she became the devil at the end. <gasps> Team, nothing like a woman scorned. Is that how it goes? I don't know. Bonnie and Caroline give 
very much main character and it's like Bonnie was there to save the day every single fucking time she and the fact that they took away Enzo like Enzo was there but not like there but like when Enzo died, I was like, y'all really gonna do Bonnie like that? But then I guess like her magic had to come back through the pain, but it's just like, I am so sick and tired of Bonnie sacrificing everything. Why does she always have to be the strong black woman in every scenario? Why does she gotta be strong all the time? Caroline just fulfilled. The Phil, the crazy control freak in me, and I loved it. I loved her at the beginning. He was like, Caroline, we need to, we need to, um, no, just no. But like at the end, I was like, oh my God, Caroline, that's my bitch. Also, fun fact, May 10th, 1994, when they were stuck in the prison world, that was literally my birthday, like my year. So it just makes me feel like really connected with the show. More like really connected with Damon, because I'm man. Ian Summerholder? You can hold me over your shoulder anytime. I don't know what the purpose of this video is, but I just wanted to sit down and talk and drink. It's been a really hard work week. This rosé is hitting every single spot in my body. I really went in on this video. 